Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I had a whole ton of people send me this story. So I couldn't thank everybody other than to do it collectively. So thank you very much. From WSB, Tom Jones wrote it. A lawyer suffered a stroke and missed court. The judge chewed him out on national TV and implied that the attorney was lying about having a stroke just to get out of going to trial. Now, attorneys will occasionally do goofy things to uh, either gain an advantage or to adjourn something, but obviously it's not what happened here. And the uh, national backlash on this, where the number of people who are amazed that this happened, uh, I suspect, I suspect that there'll be some more fallout, but an attorney who had a stroke and could not make it to court is speaking to Channel 2 Action News about the tongue lashing he got from the judge. Matt Tucker is representing a woman accused of shooting and killing a man while she was trying to make a citizen's arrest after the man was involved in a hit-and-run accident in 2019. Now, there's a whole lot to unpack there, but this is a murder trial. But I'd like to point out that the uh, citizen's arrest angle is something that's very, very sketchy. As an attorney, I advise you to probably never try it because it can go sideways so many ways and it can almost never end well for you. Almost never. But it's one of those things, if you still feel inclined to do it after being told by an attorney not to, knock yourself out. Jury selection in the murder case was supposed to start on Monday, but the attorney couldn't make it to court due to a medical emergency. There is no word when the trial might go forward, but the attorney had a stroke. He had a stroke. Channel 2's Tom Jones spoke to Tucker, who is still recovering in the hospital. Tucker is upset because he says the judge lit into him on national television, saying she's going to hold him in contempt of court because of his behavior. And here's the problem. This is a widely publicized trial. It's a high-profile trial. So apparently there's a lot of news coverage at the trial. And when the attorney didn't show up because he'd had the stroke, the uh, judge apparently on camera said some untoward things about the attorney. Now, the question, of course, you're going to ask is, well, Steve, if you have a stroke and you can't make it to court, shouldn't somebody call the court? Oh, oh, yeah, of course they should. And he says he did. So you need to seriously seek new counsel. The judge told the defendant, He's doing you a disservice because you've been here. We're ready to start a trial today. The attorney said he was stunned. I was astonished. I couldn't believe it. She kind of made me look real bad on TV. Now, here's the thing. The um, defendant told the judge that her attorney had suffered a stroke and that he was in the hospital. The judge said that the attorney never contacted her office. But of course, the attorney said his office emailed the court to let the staff know that he'd had a medical emergency. He just doesn't understand why the judge refused to accept what his client told her. So the client comes into court and says, Your Honor, my attorney's not here because he had a stroke. Judge, in essence, says, I don't believe you, and I don't believe him. And yet, the attorney emailed the court staff. Now, here is a possible issue, is that... Each judge runs their own courtroom, but there is often a chief judge who oversees the entire court. Despite the chief judge overseeing the entire court, it's not uncommon that judges run their own court the way they see fit, and occasionally they'll be going against the grain of the other judges. So, if somebody were to send an email to the court clerk, and I'm talking about the overall court clerk, not to the judge's clerk, It's possible the court clerk got the message and passed it along through the chain of command. And for whatever reason, it didn't make it to the judge. But in that case, that's not the attorney's fault. And if the attorney emailed the judge's staff, that's easy enough to prove. And of course, the judge's staff should give the note to the judge. But I've seen situations where these uh, courthouses and, and some courtrooms can almost become dysfunctional for whatever reason. So I don't know what's going on here. But the attorney says his office emailed the court to let the staff know he had a medical emergency. So that's easy enough to prove. You can look for the emails. You can find the emails and see if the emails exist. The attorney says, I've never lied to the court. 
I am an officer of the court. It is not a disservice. We've been waiting on this trial for three years. By the way, some people also get triggered when they hear that attorneys are officers of the court and they go, wait, my attorney's an officer of the court. He doesn't represent me. No, he does. An officer of the court is just a way of saying that I am held to a higher standard than you are. So if you go into court and say, I'm going to represent myself, I am not an attorney. Okay? You're over here. I come into court and I'm an attorney and I represent somebody in the exact same situation that you are in. But I represent somebody else. It's not me. I represent somebody else. I am held to a higher standard than you are. And that's what an officer of the court merely means. It merely means I will be held to a higher standard. So I've got to watch myself. I can't get away with the stuff that you can because I'm held to that standard because the judge will say, you're an officer of the court. You can't do that. And one example I can give you is for you to get in trouble for making a statement on the record that is false, you got to raise your right hand, swear to tell the truth, and then fail to tell the truth. Me? Don't have to raise my right hand. If I walk into court, the judge goes, Mr. Leto, let me ask you a question. And I answer the question incorrectly, falsely, for instance, and I know that I'm answering it falsely, I can get in trouble for that, despite the fact I never raised my right hand. Why is that? Officer of the court. So the attorney says, I've never lied to the court. I'm an officer of the court. It is not a disservice. We've been waiting on this trial for three years. The attorney said he and his client are now concerned that she may not get a fair trial. So he said he may file a motion to remove the judge from the case. And so that's the entire story from WSB. And they're the ones who spoke to the attorney uh, in the uh, hospital. And I know there are other versions of the story out there. And the uh, the judge apparently really laid into this guy, made him look bad, really bad on national TV. And so there's a problem there. And again, we've talked before about judicial conduct and how judges should uh, behave themselves on the bench. Uh, it's possible that the judge could be admonished for what she did here. Uh, but the bigger question is, if the guy sent emails in indicating he'd had a massive medical emergency, why did that message not get to the judge? Or did it? And she just didn't believe it. Because it sounds more like she may have gotten a message, just didn't believe it for whatever reason. And, you know, obviously, if a trial gets canceled or adjourned uh, the Saturday before the Monday it's supposed to start, that's short notice because courts generally don't operate on weekends. So all of the jury notices have been sent out. Uh, all of the witnesses have been told to attend. Uh, all the people who need to be there are going to be there. And so you got to notify people, presumably, Monday morning, which means that many people will show up for court and be inconvenienced. But most people would understand if you're told that, oh, by the way, the trial is going to be adjourned because the defense attorney had a stroke. And obviously, it's not like, oh, the defense attorney had a vacation he couldn't cancel and he forgot to tell us about it. Okay, this is something that happens suddenly and it's catastrophic. And if he is the attorney who's handling her case, then if he's not available because of this, that's perfectly understandable. And this is a kind of like a one in a million thing. I've known people who've had strokes. Okay, and I don't know the extent of this man's stroke because he's talking to reporters and so on. Uh, but I've sat at a bedside of someone I know very well who'd had a stroke within 24 hours prior to me sitting at their bedside. And if that had been me, I couldn't have gone to court the next day. I know I couldn't have. And so this is crazy, but the judge did this. Now, I have to tell you a story that's related in uh, a certain way to what happened here, just to let you know that there are stories that go the other way. And again, I've been practicing law for 31 years. I've seen a lot of crazy stuff. I had a case set to go to trial in Macomb County, Michigan. This is a while ago, but it was set to go to trial. And it was supposed to go to trial the next day. And I forgot what day of the week it was, but it was in the middle of the week because I was in, in my office the day before preparing with my client. My client came in and we spent all day preparing for trial. So we had witnesses lined up, uh, testimony outlined, you know, questions I was going to ask and so on. All my exhibits were prepared. You got to make copies and number and label and all kinds. And so we're doing all this stuff all day long. We're preparing to go to court tomorrow. At 5.30, 
Everyone else has left the office. My secretary has left the office. The other attorneys left the office. Just me and my client. 5.30, my phone rings. I answer it. My opposing counsel. <coughs> oh, Steve. Oh, God. Oh, 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 oh um, I'm sick. I, 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 I can't go to, I can't, we can't try the case tomorrow. Oh, can we adjourn the trial? 5.30, day before the trial. Can we adjourn the trial? I don't feel good. Now, I've been dealing with this guy for a while, and I go, hey, I'm just curious. I go, why didn't you call me earlier? Go, why? I go, I've been with my client all day preparing. I go, haven't you? And he didn't answer that. He goes, well, I- I'm too sick to try the case. And I go, it's 5.30, the day before the trial. Jury notices have been sent. Witnesses have been told to attend. The judge has cleared a day off his docket or two to, to try the case. I go, besides that, you can't call the court at 5.30 and get a, ca- get a case canceled or adjourned. I go, they, they, they went home an hour and a half ago. <laughs> they don't work till 5. And he said, he goes, well, he goes, I bet I could call them right now and cancel it. I bet if you, would, if you would agree to it, I bet we could call them right now and cancel it. I go, hang on. Let me put you on hold. My client's right here. I put my client on hold. My client goes, No. He goes, I took tomorrow off from work. I took the next day off from work. It's a total nightmare to do that. Uh, he goes, we got witnesses coming. We can't get all the witnesses. We got to go to court tomorrow no matter what just to tell the witnesses to go home. He goes, we, no, no. And keep in mind, I'm the attorney. My client's the client. My client gets the final say on that. But I agreed with my client. I, 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 I agreed. So I, I grabbed the phone again. I go, I'm really sorry. My client and I... You have to say no to this. I said, besides that, it's not even possible for you to adjourn the case at 5.30 the day before the trial. And he goes, okay, fine, I'll see you in court tomorrow. And he hangs up. So my client and I meet the next day in the hallway outside the court. Court opens up. We walk inside. I check in. The clerk goes, why are you here? I go, I've got a trial today. She goes, uh, 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 opposing counsel called yesterday and canceled. I go, how does an opposing counsel call up and cancel without my permission? She goes, he said he had it. I go, when did he call? He called before he called me. That's how he knew he could cancel it, because he'd already canceled it. (laughs) I go, no. And I tell the clerk what happened. The clerk goes, oh, we got a problem then. Clerk goes back to the judge. Judge calls me into chambers, goes, tell me the story. I tell him the story. And he goes, really? He goes, that's a problem. Because that means somebody called my court yesterday and misled my clerk. He opens the file up, looks at the phone number for opposing counsel, dials the number, puts him on speakerphone, and goes, Hey, uh, I'm sitting here uh, with opposing counsel. Who's here? What's going on? And he goes, Well, I called him yesterday and he got permission. The judge goes, You're on speakerphone. And he goes, Oh, well, I thought I had permission. Did, didn't I, Mr. Leto? I said, I told you in no uncertain terms. My, my client heard the whole thing. I said, no. I go, you called me at 5.30 asking for permission. I said, we obviously couldn't even get a hold of court at 5.30. And I had all my witnesses lined up. What are you talking about? And he goes, well, I thought you agreed. I said, number one, my understanding is you called the court before you called me. And the judge goes, you did. And he goes, Your Honor, I'm just, I'm just right now, I'm on medicine. Uh, 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 I'm so, I'm so, I'm so sick. Oh, I'm so sick. And he just started going into that I'm so sick thing again. And the judge goes, Tell you what, uh, you're going to pay Mr. Leto $500 for being here this morning, and we'll adjourn the trial. Thank you. And he hangs up on the guy. He looks at me, he goes, Steve, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he goes, He called our court yesterday, court clerk and said that two of you agreed to adjourn it because he was so sick. And I said, if he had called me and said, I I know I can get it adjourned, but I need your permission first, and then he called and you adjourned it, I go, I probably would have done that. I said, but the thing is, he called me at 5.30. And that's, that's the fact I remember the most, is he called me so late. I'm like, dude, the courts are closed. You you want me to go in tomorrow morning and say we've agreed to an adjournment and you aren't going to be there? If you are going to be the judge, no, try the case. You know, so people do crazy things. I have no idea if that man was sick. I don't know. I do not know. And um, 
he's one of those guys I dealt with more than once, but not often enough to get a feel for whether or not he was 100% honest. I don't know. I know other attorneys that I've had on the opposite sides of lawsuits of mine where literally they could call me up and tell me almost anything. And I just believe it because I know that guy wouldn't lie to me. I, I, know, I, I know that guy's as honest as a day is long. And I know that some other attorneys who feel that way about me because we've had this discussion. And we've, we, you know, <laughs> many attorneys know who the problem attorneys are. And I'm not saying they're problem attorneys in the sense that they're breaking laws or breaking rules of ethics. I'm just talking about when you meet an attorney for the first time and you shake hands and agree to something, you're always wondering how trustworthy the attorney is. But there are some that you know just are. This guy, I didn't know him that well. And this always bothered me because I know for a fact now what he had done was he called the court and said, hey, I talked to Mr. Leto. He said, because I'm sick, we can adjourn this case. Is that okay? And then he called me basically to tell me the news. And he realized he couldn't tell me the news properly because then he'd have to admit that he misled the court. So he asked me if I would agree to it. And if I had said yes, he would have then hung up the phone, counted to like uh, 10 or 15. They called me back and said, boom, we're done. Except he called me at 5.30. <laughs> so I don't know beyond what I just told you of that story other than I got the $500. But it was small consolation because we had to send all our witnesses home. My client took the day off from work. You know, all this goofy stuff. So there you go. But here it's a lawyer who suffered a stroke. He missed court. And the judge chewed him out on national television implying that he had somehow been... Uh, misleading the court, and he was jeopardizing his client's case because he'd had a stroke. Crazy case. Thank you, everyone who sent it to me from WSB Channel 2. A lawyer suffered a stroke, missed court. Clayton County judge chewed him out on national television. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Most stuff people worry about isn't ever going to happen anyway.